boys and girls of St. Lucie Public Schools, AKA Fabulous Fourth Grade. I am Miss Owens, the math coach at Longwood Elementary, and I am always excited to be able to work with you guys from home. So thank you for tuning in. In today's lesson, we are going to take a look at standard MD 1.2. And this standard involves solving problems involving measurement. Now you might ask, Miss Owens, why is it important to be able to solve problems involving measurement? Thank you for asking. It's important to be able to solve problems involving measurement because you will face real life scenarios where you're gonna have to use critical thinking skills and troubleshoot through the problems at hand. So we're just building you up for that moment. <laughs> you're getting the skills that you're going to need. Okay, so the standard reads, the student will be able to use the four operations to solve word problems involving distances, intervals of time, and money, including problems involving simple fractions or decimals. Um, and the student will be able to represent fractional quantities of distance and intervals of time using linear models, AKA, the number line. Our key idea says, use your understanding of measurement. We understand the relative size of the units um, and equivalent relationships. We use our reference sheet to help us understand the equivalent relationships between the units of measure. And that's how we're gonna solve these real world problems. Our strategy for this lesson will also be the two column table. So let's take a look at the problem from last time and let's just go over it. It says Louisa bought three packages of hamburger meat. Two packages weighed two pounds, nine ounces each, and the third weighed one pound, 10 ounces. How many ounces of hamburger meat did Louisa buy? Well, the answer is 108 ounces. And I converted each hamburger package two ounces. Um, I used a two column table. And then once I got them all in ounces, I just added them all up. And that's how I got the total. Did you get that same answer? Which strategy did you use? Interesting. Awesome. I knew you would have gotten it right because you work hard and hard work pays off. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the problem for today. I have another word problem for you. And it reads, the table below displays the amount of time Jack read each day during the summer reading challenge. Jack's reading log. Week one, 2.5 hours. Week two, 75 minutes. Week three, two and a half hours. Week four, two hours, 35 minutes. Hmm. On which week did Jack read the longest amount of time? Well, we are going to take a look at converting hours and minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and use our two column table. You don't have anything to write with? Okie doke. I will give you five seconds to get something to write on and something to write with. Are you ready? And go. In five, ooh, four, uh-huh, three, yeah, two, mm-hmm, one, uh-huh, zero. All right, thank you for being quick on your feet and back to the lesson. So we're gonna go ahead and use the two column table to convert minutes and hours. And we're gonna begin with the larger unit. So we know that one hour is equivalent to 60 minutes 
and two hours is equivalent to 120 minutes. We want to go ahead and establish our rule when converting hours to minutes. The rule is multiply by 60. So then if we have three hours, that will be equivalent to 100. 80 minutes because 3 times 60 equals 180 and if we have 4 hours that will be equivalent to 240 minutes because 4 times 60 is 240 okay and moving on so let's convert each of these time slots so if we're looking at week one where we have 2.5 hours, well, 2.5 is two and a half. It's the same thing as two and a half. So we know that two hours is still hours, but if we convert that 0.5 hour to minutes, if one hour is equivalent to 60 minutes, then half Half of 60 minutes is how many minutes? 30 minutes. So this 2.5 is the same thing as 2 hours 30 minutes. Let's move on to week 2. Here we have 75 minutes. So I'm just going to come down here and take 75 minutes minutes and decompose it into hours and minutes. If I took 60 of those minutes out of the 75, I have enough to make one hour. And I will have 15 minutes remaining. So here are the 60 minutes, also equivalent to one hour, and 15 minutes. So then 75 minutes is equivalent to one hour, 15 minutes. Are you working with me? Write this down. So moving down to week three, I have two and a half hours. And we know from here that two and a half hours, whether you use it as 2.5 or two and one half, is equivalent to two hours, 30 minutes. The time that Jack spent reading on week one and week three, he actually spent the same amount of time. It was just recorded using mixed numbers and decimals. So moving to week four, he read for two hours, 35 minutes. So let's take a look at the question. On which week did Jack read the longest amount of time? Two hours, 30 minutes, one hour, 15 minutes, two hours, 30 minutes, two hours, 35 minutes. Which time is longest? Definitely not the 75 minutes with the hour and 15 minutes. The other ones all have two hours in it. But let's take a look at how many minutes goes with those two hours. We have 30 minutes here, 30 minutes here, and 35 minutes here, which is the longest amount of time. Two hours, 35 minutes. On which week did Jack read the longest? During week four. Awesome. You guys rock. Okay, so this is all of our time for today. I want to leave you guys with a problem to work on and we will review it next time. Are you ready? Here we go. The Jackson family eats one kilogram of Fruit Loop cereal each week. If each box of cereal has a mass of 234 grams, how many boxes of cereal does Mrs. Jackson have to buy for her family each week? Hmm, they eat one kilogram, 
but the boxes only come in a size of 234 grams. Before we go, let's take a look at the reference sheet. When you are converting grams to kilograms, one kilogram is equivalent to 1,000 grams. Hmm. They eat one kilogram of cereal each week, but the boxes only come in a size of 234 grams. How many boxes does Mrs. Jackson have to buy? Hmm. I can't wait to go over that next time. Thank you guys for tuning in with me, and I will see you next time. Bye.